In order to know what we're working with, we need to know the term juridical person. Juridical person is a human legal person that is not a single natural person, but an organization recognized by laws of fictitious persons such as a corporation, government agency, non-governmental organization, or international organizations such as the United Nations. Other terms include artificial person, corporate person, juridical person, juridical entity, juridic person, or juristic person. The juridical person maintains certain duties and rights as enumerated under relevant laws. The rights and responsibilities of a juridical person are distinct from those of the natural persons constituting it. Since the beginning of writing at the start of recorded history, associations have been known as the original form of the juridical person. This is documented for the 1st century AD for Jewish trading companies in Roman law. Entities gained significance through institutions such as the state communities, corporations, universitates, and their associations of persons and assets as well as the associations. At least three persons were required in Rome to found an association. Of course, that is Wikipedia, so take of that what you will. Again, the grain of salt thing. On memebean.com roots forward slash mono dash one, it states the prefix mono and its variant mon, which both mean one, are important prefixes in English language. For instance, the prefix mono gave rise to the words monologue and monotonous, whereas we find its variant mon in words such as monarchy and monk. A monarchy, for instance, is ruled by one, whereas a monosyllabic word only has one syllable. The prefix mono and its variant mon mean one. Here is anything but monotonous root cast to teach you about these singular prefixes. Let's first take a look at the prefix mono, which means one, in the game Monopoly. For instance, the point of the game is to have one player eventually to be the one controller of all property on the board. A monologue is spoken by a comedian who is the one person speaking. Usually a train travels along two tracks. In contrast, a railway system that only uses one rail is a mono rail. Has your teacher ever spoken in a monotone over and over again in just one boring tone? Class might get pretty monotonous if you had a teacher like that. Imagine if the same teacher only used monosyllabic words or words with only one syllable. Perhaps you've heard of people contracting the disease mono, also known as the kissing disease. Mono is short for mono mononucleosis, a disease with symptoms of extreme fatigue and signaling by a large concentration of white blood cells that have single or one nuclei. Prefix mono can also exist as mon, which also means one, for instance, a monk leads a solitary life or single life content by being just one and not getting married. Yeah, right. A monarch such as one queen or king presides over a monarchy, a system of government ruled by one ruler. Okay, so that's a very rudimentary explanation, but we do get kind of the idea that the mon is significant. Moni, with an I-E, is an archaic spelling of money with an E-Y, allegedly. Of course, we all use money in various war, uh, forms. Specie, for instance, used to be formed with an IE and is what we would call a form of money. The money that we know of nowadays might not be the same money that uh, people used in past centuries. So what exactly is the word money? Monaco starts with the prefix mon. It's officially the Principality of Monaco is a sovereign city-state and microstate in the French Riviera a few kilometers west of the Italian region of Liguria. In Western Europe on the Mediterranean Sea, it is bordered by France to the north, east, and west. The Principality is home to 338,682 residents, of whom 9,486 are Mona Monegasque nationals. It's widely recognized as one of the most expansive and wealthiest places in the world. The official language of the principality is French. In addition, Monegasque, a variety of Ligurian, English, and Italian, are spoken and understood by many residents. And remember, the name of this place is Monaco. Monaco is Italian for monk or friar. Religioso che vive in convento. Il Monaco era assorto nella preghiera. The monk or friar was lost in prayer. From the word reference, English Italian uh, English Italiano Dictionary, copyright 2024. Des Moines is the capital and most popular city in the U.S. state of Iowa. It is the county seat of Polk County with parts extending to Warren County. It was incorporated on September 22, 1851 as Fort Des Moines, which was shortened to Des Moines in 1857. It is located on and named after the Des Moines River, which was like which likely was adapted from the early French name Rivière des Moines, or Des Moines, meaning River of the Monks. The city's population was 
214,133 as of the 2020 census. Six county metropolitan, metropolitan area is ranked 80, 81st. Yeah, in terms of population in the United States with 709,466 residents, according to the 2022 census, 2020 census by the United States Census Bureau, it is the largest metropolitan area fully located within the state. We see this uh, pre, well, this s prefix used as a suffix in the Book of Mormon. Again, more and moan. There is that word again, M-O-N. Mammon, in the New Testament of the Bible, is commonly thought to mean money, material wealth, or any entity that promises wealth and is associated with the greedy pursuit of gain. Again, the suffix there, as we've seen in the prefix for money, is mon, and more mon, and money. Both have the M-O-N there, and mammon has it as a suffix. Personifications Gregory of Nyssa also asserted that Mammon was another name for Beelzebub. In the 4th century, Cyprian and Jerome relate Mammon to greed and greed as an evil master that enslaves, and John Chrysostom even personifies Mammon as greed. During the Middle Ages, Mammon was commonly personified as the demon of wealth and greed, thus Peter Lombard says riches are called by the name of a devil, namely Mammon, for Mammon is the name of a devil by which name riches are called according to the Syrian tongue. Piers Plowman also regards Mammon as a deity. Nicholas de Lira commented on the passage in Luke, says, Mammon est nomen demonis. Mammon is the name of a demon. Albert Barnes in the... And of course, notice demon, right? De is of. Mon. Of mon. Of one, right? According to mon being one. So, Mammon... Est nomen demonis has to mean something different than mammon is the name of a demon because daemon is uh, is like two words there. Albert Barnes in the notes on the New Testament states that mammon was a Syriac word for an idol worshipped as a god of riches, similar to Plutus among the Greeks, but he cited no authority to this statement. And of course, all of these descriptions are intended to be misleading. Testament of Solomon. The Testament of Solomon is a pseudographical or pseudographical composite text described to King Solomon but not regarded as canonical scripture by Jews or Christian groups. It was written in the Greek language based on precedents dating back to the early 1st millennium CE, but was likely not completed in any meaningful textual sense until sometime in the Middle Ages. In its most noteworthy recensions, the text describes how Solomon was enabled to build his temple by commanding demons, daemons, right? De Mon, by means of a magical ring that was entrusted to him by the archangel Michael. Testament of Solomon. In the Testament of Solomon, Beelzebub, not Beelzebub, Beelzebul. That's interesting. That's probably wrong, but I don't know. Appears as prince of the demons and says that he was formerly a leading heavenly angel who was associated with the star Hesperus, the normal Greek name for the planet Venus, Aphrodite, as evening star. Seemingly, Beelzebul, or Beelzebub, here is synonymous with Lucifer, Beelzebub, or Beelzebul, claims to cause destruction through tyrants, to cause demons to be worshipped among men, to excite priests to lust, to cause jealousies in cities and murders, and to bring about war. Sounds like corporation. The Testament of Solomon is an Old Testament pseudographical work purportedly written by King Solomon, in which the author mostly describes particular demons who he enslaved to help build Solomon's temple with substantial Christian interpolations, otherwise known as mystification and revision. Demons. Many of the demons in Solomon's encounters are of Greek, Egyptian, Jewish, Christian, Arabic, and other traditions like any company can be. The majority of the testament consists of Solomon's interviews with the demons, some of which are grotesque, including one which has no head. Two demons associated strongly with sexuality appear among them, Asmodeus from the Book of Tobit, and a female demon named Abizuth, who has similarities to Lilith, such as killing newborn children. Kind of like a um, certain pharmaceutical practice of... Uh, that practice that we won't call about, but basically, you know, removes unborn children. Right? <clears throat> but doesn't quote-unquote kill them, because we're not allowed to say that. But yeah, that's what that sounds like. That sounds like a uh, entity that um, makes itself a business off of the parts of uh, 
done away with children, basically. Most of the other demons are otherwise unknown by name from other works. The demon Abesithibu is said to have hardened the Pharaoh's heart rather than God. The demons listed in order of appearance are Orneus, Beelzebub, Onoskelis, Asmodeus, Tephras, the seven star sisters, a reference to the Pleiades, Envy, Rabdos, Wrath, Tribalos, Obisuth, the winged wing dragon, Anepsigos, Kunopastan, and an unnamed lustful, lustful spirit, the 36 spirits of the deacons, Ephipus, and Abesithibu. Financial system is a system that allows the exchange of funds between financial market participants, such as lenders, investors, and borrowers. Financial systems operate at national and global levels. Financial institutions consist of complex, closely related services, markets, and institutions intended to provide an efficient and regular linkage between investors and borrowers. In other words, financial systems can be known wherever there exists the exchange of a financial medium. Money? Money? Where there is a reallocation of funds into needy areas, financial markets, business firms, banks, to utilize the potential of ideal money and place it in use to get benefits out of it. The whole mecha mechanism is known as the financial system. Money, credit, and finance are used as media of exchange in financial systems. They serve as a medium of known value for which goods and services can be exchanged as an alternative to bartering. A modern financial system may include banks, public sector, or private sector, financial markets, financial instruments, and financial services. Financial systems allow funds to be allocated, invested, or moved between economic sectors, and they enable individuals and companies to share the associated risks. So that's how you would get a quote-unquote temple built using demons, or entities of money. This is essentially like the House of Cards. It is a house, one house, made out of many cards or many pieces. Right? That's the idea. One of many. One out of many. The entity itself is comprised of many within it, and so that is the concept at work here. Except, mostly when it comes to corporations and these juridical entities, they are in fact mostly structured with paperwork. Right? writings and manuals and forms and their body like the body of a writing the corporation or corpore corporeal form is made up of of various things it could be made up of numbers such as with uh, financial statements and uh, investment company which is a juridical entity that's only purpose is to uh, service um, uh, to move money and things like that but you also have the stipulations that these juridical entities will make to human beings. Um, of course, human being, according to that Wikipedia article, uh, doesn't apply to a natural-born human being anymore. It applies to anyone. And so these are entities of money. They're demons. And they are made up of paper, right? In one way or another, they're made of paper. They're made it up of of books, they're made up of writing, and they're made up of currency, and they're made of exchange, and financial institutions, and systems, and plans, and manuals, and procedures, and policies, and all of these writings get distributed around to people, and then they follow them, and those people carry it out, and this is the reason why so many Masons are lawyers and bankers, mainly. Lawyers write a lot of paperwork to form the entities, and then the bankers carry out the financial function of them. Now, the Ring of Solomon, the first thing that we should notice is that it is a signet ring with indentations and symbols. This is a similar to the type of ring that people at colleges would obtain, the college ring, uh, such as this example with Harvard. And the Freemasons have their own signet ring which they use for special symbols. The Pope wears a signet ring on his hands, and many visiting dignitaries are known to have to kiss the ring of the Pope. Of course, a signet ring is used to stamp an emblem into wax, which is then affixed or used to affix to paper as the formation of a deed or an act, a, a form that is carried out through many steps to prove its authenticity and worth and value as an object of paper. And many of these concepts can be found in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Fellowship of the Ring, with the One Ring of Sauron of Mordor. 
Also, these concepts can easily be found in Garth Nix's Sabriel, which talks about charter magic, the use of symbols, and free magic versus charter magic, the binding of charter magic, and the dangers on both sides of order and chaos. Of course, the Vatican is very well known of an obsession with keys, specifically their symbol. So, a cipher... In cryptography, a cipher or cipher is an algorithm for performing encryption or decryption. Decryption, a series of well-defined steps that can be followed as a procedure. An alternative, less common term is encipherment. To encipher or encode is to convert information into cipher code. In common parlance, cipher is a synonym of code, as they are both a set of steps that encrypt messages. However, the concepts are distinct in cryptography, especially classical cryptography. And, of course, this Wikipedia article in itself is an example of somebody writing in code or using a uh, cipher. Codes generally substitute different lengths of strings of characters in the output, where ciphers generally substitute the same number of characters as they are input. A code maps one meaning with another. Words and phrases can be coded as letters or numbers. Codes typically have direct meaning from input to key. Codes primarily function to save time. Ciphers are algorithmic. They give The given input must follow the ciphers process to be solved. Ciphers are commonly used to encrypt written information. Codes are operated by substituting according to a large codebook, which linked a random string of characters or numbers to a word or phrase. For example, U, Q, J, H, S, E could be in a code for proceed to the following coordinates. When using a cipher, the original information is known as plain text in the encrypted form as ciphertext. Ciphertext message contains all information on the plain text message, but is not a format readable by a human or computer without the proper mechanism to decrypt it. The operation of a cipher usually depends on a piece of auxiliary information called a key such as the ones on the Vatican flag, or in traditional NSA parlance, a crypto variable. Yeah, thanks for that. We didn't need that garbage. The encrypting procedure is very depending on the key, which changes the detailed operation of the algorithm. A key must be selected before using a cipher to encrypt a message. Without knowledge of the key, it should be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to decrypt the resulting cipher text into readable plain text, and that's not necessarily true. They are talking about a cipher in terms of uh, coded messages and computer function, right? Coded messages as in somebody writes something and then that per person puts the sheet of paper over it with spaces cut out and they read the message that's really intended for them, right? Like somebody publishing a message on a newspaper article with uh, coded words put into a pattern in it. But there are many different ciphers that we just don't think about today. For instance, you can use the signet ring and turn it a certain way and stamp it in a certain angle and a certain direction, and that is in fact a cipher because you are communicating the authenticity of the bearer since they know how to properly use that ring. Jargon is also another form of a cipher. It is intended to confuse and allow people to speak about something, whereas others in the vicinity will not know what they're talking about because they do not have the essentially the key in their mind about what the meaning of those jargon, jargon words are. If somebody speaks in a different language with the intent, or not necessarily even with the intent, if they speak in another language and other people in the vicinity do not know what they're saying, they are speaking with a cipher. Every language form on the planet, including symbols, involve a cipher. Because one person possesses the ability to decrypt in their mind the understanding of what is being communicated. And thus, you have a cipher text. Notice the prefix and or prefix crypto or crypt are coded, covered, and hidden. Of course, a crypt is also a word for a place that people are buried. This is brought by dailywritingtips.com, list prefixes and suffixes. Naturally, the Freemasons are very well known, the Freemasons or the Builders, they're very well known for their hand gestures and communicating with symbols, showing various uh, formulations in their hands, and of course handshakes, all the various handshakes of the Masons are well known. These are all links in a cipher or a lock system, which is designed to encode messages, but also to seal things or open them up as as you would desire, right? 
that comes into context of the actual physical structures of the buildings. The uh, corporeal, other por portions of the corporeal form to the corporation are well known as high rise buildings in the financial district, giant skyscrapers and tall buildings that are really ominous with the glass windows. But you also have variations in other constructions, such as with the Golden Dome on Epstein Island on that weird temple looking thing. You have the Golden Dome on the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, and you have the Golden Dome on the Capitol Building in Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines being known as the Monks. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, subscribe to my channels. Please join my newly formed Discord. There are free books available at the links, and if you so choose, you may support my work at any of the options available. PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Buy Me a Coffee. Thank you.